Hello and welcome to this video about DMN decision tables. In this video, we are going to talk through how you can create a decision table inside Flowable, integrate it into a process and the different capabilities from decision tables. To get started, we first need to create an app. So let's press create. Here we have the new app dialog. Here we are going to say a loan request app and uh, press create. Once we are inside the app, we then can create a new model. So let's say we are creating a new process and this process we are going to call loan approval. Now we are inside the process editor where we can add new things. So first let's create a new uh, user task and that's our uh, loan request intake. We are going to create a form for that. So here on the right hand side, we have the form reference. That's our loan request intake form. We need to press create and then we have selected here open for editing on finish. So it will automatically open once we press finish. Here we can now add a few fields which we are later on going to use in the decision table. So let's say we have a name. We are going to make that name. Um, it's already visible. We still need to make it uh, required. Then we are going to add next an age. So that's a number field. Uh, we also make that uh, required. And we say that the minimum value should be zero since we don't want to have a negative age. Uh, next, we are going to create a uh, select single. That is our country. For the country, we are saying as well, it should be required. And we uh, then need to configure our data source. Now here we have different options. Uh, default is static here. You can rest, use rest, master data and data objects as well. They allow you basically to have the uh, information stored somewhere outside. Since this video is about decision tables, I just go for uh, static uh, for now. And um, we are then uh, using those values in here. Uh, let's say United States of America, and we just called it here short USA. Then next, we are going to have a United Kingdom in here. That's UK. Then we have uh, maybe the Netherlands as well, NL, and last but not least, Switzerland, CH. With that, we have a few in that list, which we can later on go ahead and select. Um, we add one large, uh, one last uh, field, which is a, a amount field, a number field over here. Um, we are going back to the required validation in here and um, we then also say that we would like to have a uh, prefix for example so let's say those are dollars and we can also number that field uh, as we uh, would like to okay with that we have now a, a simple intake form and we can proceed uh, basically in our process and in our process, the next step after that one is going to be a decision task. So in here, we have different tasks. And one of those uh, is, for example, then uh, the decision task. And when we place that here, uh, we have here basically our uh, loan uh, evaluation, which is going to be our decision table. Now for that uh, decision task, I still need to add a decision table. So we are going to add one here, uh, evaluate loan request and say create. We are going to open that one. And now we have a, a small decision table in here. We have here, and that is a slightly gray in the background, an input column and the slight blue one is an output column. First, we are going to start with the input columns. So let's edit this column over here and we are calling that age. 
we are adding the age variable in here and we have a, a number field in here. So that is basically the age which we have had from before. We are going to add an additional column for the country now. Uh, variable name here is country. And then uh, this one is from the type string. And then last but not least, um, we are going to add uh, the amount as well. And the amount uh, basically is again a number field. With that, we have our input columns. We are not going to add name in here since we don't want to make any decisions uh, by the name. Now for the output columns, I'm just going to add one. You can have multiple as well. And that here I'm doing through the edit. We call that approval state. We give that a name, the name approval state and the variable type is a string. We can also say here we have certain allowed values. Uh, maybe we add the client here, review and approved. And now we can start filling our decision table. So first let's say in case the age is less uh, than 21 and the country and the amount doesn't matter. So we can just write an uh, dash in there. Then we are going for the approval st uh, state decline. Uh, the next one uh, is the age is going to be larger or equal than 21. And we have an is in here uh, for our country. And there we can write that in um, upper, uh, uppercase as we have it before as the value which we are going to store. And double quotes, uh, the list basically of different items which we would like to allow. And we just say here that we are going for the amount uh, which is larger or equal than 100,000. And for Switzerland and the Netherlands, uh, we just say that should go to review. We see here we have auto completion with our uh, fields from before. Let's do something similar now for the um, uh, age 21, but this time we say is not in uh, Netherlands and Switzerland. And again, our uh, value over here is going to be 100,000. And in this case, we are going for declined. And now the last rule which we are going to add is larger than uh, 21. And we say here, uh, basically, uh, it's less than 100,000. Then we are going for approved. So now we have a simple decision table. We only need to decide what is our hit policy. So that hit policy here is at the top left. We currently have the hit policy first. First means that the first rule for which all the diff uh, all the uh, input parameters are true and all those conditions are fulfilled, basically it will uh, take that rule and stop the evaluation of your decision table. Now next is unique, and that's actually the one which I'm going to take. Um, that is uh, allowing you to basically evaluate all rules, and it is then taking basically the one rule for which everything is fulfilled. For this one, you need to ensure that um, really there is one unique result for the decision table, otherwise um, it will fail. For any, um, it's similar, only that in this case, you can have multiple match as long as they have the same output. Uh, so it's a little bit less strict. Priority allows you to use uh, what we have had over here for the approval state that we added different allowed values. And those basically here are also in the priority then uh, at the end. So declined it is going to take first when something is declined review is second and approved is last so with that you can ensure that you rather do something with a higher priority than something else rule order um, is 
uh, one of the ones which return multiple results. And in this case, it will just uh, return them in the order of your um, uh, decision table list. Output order will also return multiple. And uh, for this one, actually, uh, it is then using uh, the priority uh, to decide which one should be first, which one should be last. Last but not least, there's collect, which allows you to aggregate then uh, over your result. Now let's go for unique. Let's say finish here, and then we save that. And um, now we are going back here to our process, since now we can use that decision, uh, which we can uh, call here evaluate a loan request. Uh, to proceed in our flow. Therefore, I'm going to add an exclusive gateway next, followed by um, three different possibilities. So the first one is going to be uh, here, uh, loan approved. The next one is going to be here, um, then uh, loan declined. And um, then we add one last one, which is actually our um, review loan request. Now we can set here on those sequence flows labels as well. So let's uh, call that one here approved. And let's move that on this side. And then we have this one which is declined. And uh, then we have the one here in the middle which is review required. Now we still need to set the condition expression in here and there we can basically uh, build that out uh, based on our um, result from the decision table, which is um, in here um, actually our approval state. And we say that needs to be equals uh, to the value approved, I think was the top one. So let's apply those changes and then finish it. That's the approved one. So that one is right. Here we have a condition expression this is again. That's again our approval state. And we say that one is equals to the text value declined. And for the last one, uh, I make my life easy. I just say here, we are considering that the default flow. So if nothing else basically fits, then we are going to take this one. Now to model out that one a little bit further, we now need to create a, um, a form, review loan request form. And uh, for this form, I am going to take a really simple approach. I say here we have a sub form. And that subform actually is getting as a form reference my uh, intake form. With that, basically, I have the form from before already here. Um, we can say here that one is supposed to be disabled. And with that, we basically have here um, our first form. We have a multi line text then uh, basically above that, uh, where we could say in here. Uh, we have some review comments uh, the user can enter. And last but not least, we can go ahead and um, say we would like to have some outcomes. Um, we are going to uh, say the outcome variable name is review state, um, which it is then automatically creating. And we have here the approve option where we would like to store approved. And then we have the decline option where we would like to store declined. And um, with that, we have a simple form to do a manual review. Let's integrate that in here as well. We add an exclusive gateway after here. And then for the exclusive gateway, we have two options. Uh, we have either the approved option or we are going for the decline option. So one is going to the top part, basically, approved and declined. We do not have the option for a second review, so we don't need to do that. So here we have now an addition, 
additional um, expression. So here we have the uh, review state, uh, which we have, and that is equals to the text value approved here. And um, for the other one, uh, we have the, actually that one was the declined one. So I did do that wrong. So let's correct that quickly. That's declined. And then we can do the other one, which is the top part that is approved. So here we have now our review state that is equals to approved. Okay, with that, we basically have our process model done. We can save that and then we can go ahead and publish. And once published, we can go to flowable work and try it out. So let's say new work in here. Um, it will automatically ask me if I would like to create a loan approval since that's, that's the only process I have. And now we can go ahead and enter a name. So let's just call that requester uh, one. Age is uh, 35. Um, our country is in this case, for example, uh, the Netherlands and we have 500 uh, K. Okay. When we complete that, uh, we see we go here into the review loan request. And when we look actually at the history of our process, we see basically we took the direct path and then looking at the decisions, we see that all of that was uh, evaluated. And here the larger than 21, basically that will hit. Um, now here we have then basically the country which matched and the uh, amount which matched for those other two here, the country didn't match and here the amount didn't match. Let's execute a second instance as well. That's then basically our request uh, uh, two. H is 35 again. This time we are going for United States and we have again 500,000. Uh, once I complete this one, we see it directly ends. Uh, when we look here at the history, we see uh, that it went straight for decline. We can again analyze the decision table and see basically that rule number three uh, hit while it still evaluated all of them since we have the hit policy unique. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.